What's up, nerds? Welcome to DNA Dual Shocked, episode eight. I guess what this is, episode eight. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, alongside me, as always, Adam McGill. Hey, hey, what's up, everyone? And Edward Varnell. I need some chicken and waffles right about now. Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing? How's your week going? Good. It's uh, vacation mode. I am. Really. Vacation mode. I'm right. For vacation. I'm ready. Is it I October just came, yet? I just came back from vacation and kind of want to go back. <laughs> I know. This crazy guy did our show while he was on vacation. Uh, that's dedication. That's commitment. That's commitment. That's commitment. Hey, I get paid tomorrow, so yay. Yay, me too. I'm going to go get Metroid. What? We didn't even get it in our store. I'm like, oh, dang it. What do you mean Metroid? The new one? The Federation Force? Yeah. Yeah. It's coming out tomorrow uh, for a Friday. Uh, I haven't seen any reviews of it yet. I'm concerned. People are are playing it now. Uh, I think the embargo is going to be lifted up probably probably tonight, like around 1 o'clock, 1 or 2. Uh, okay. But people are saying they, they're giving. Um, they'll probably get seven or eight, depending on. But every but people are just like they're surprised on how good it is. They're like there are some problems with it, but uh, I think once the reviews come out, uh, you know, we'll see how it does. Um, I'm excited to play it. I should say. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited because like, it it feels like it has a little bit of of the grind, like, similar to Metroid, mixed with a little bit of, like, an RPG-style thing. Trying to avoid the word destiny, but... Oh, that's going to come up. No, I mean, I've been playing it a lot lately, but, like, it kind of has that feel where, like, you grind a little bit, you get stuff to upgrade your suit, Mm -hmm. and then you just do it again and again, and it's got that multiplayer loop that I... I thought it was, um... So, it's a it's I know a co-op. It's, it's, yeah, a co-op. it's, co-op game, it's really? like all the missions are set up kind of like Destiny Strikes. It looks like, oh. where like you go in, you, uh, you know, maybe solve a puzzle or two. You go in, and you find some loot, and then you kill a boss. Yeah. So. So I'm watching a, a video of it gameplay here. <laughs> Metroid why Destiny. Look, why does it look a little dated? I don't know. Because it's on 3DS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 3DS is like, has the insides of it in 64. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I'm like, this is not, this is not Wii or Wii U, but... Uh-uh. Well, it it reminds me just of the Wii game, the first Wii game that came out. Yeah. Uh, which I did quite enjoy, actually. Oh, Corruption? I just didn't enjoy doing this. Yeah. Game. I, that's the only, that's the only Metroid Prime game I didn't finish. Which I did finish. I did finish other M, ironically enough. But I think that's because you held the remote sideways, like an NES. Well, I, other so, M as well. Was it co-op online or only co-op if you're sitting next to your buddy? Co-op I think online. it's co-op online. Okay. Don't lie. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll see how well it works. We'll see. Hmm. We'll yeah. see. If if I don't, if my job doesn't get it, then I'll get it Saturday, uh, like from Target, like from my house. <gasps> yeah. Well, I'm just gonna. It's not I've already you, like, I already downloaded it and pre-installed it. Pretty excited. It's against your store policy, isn't it? Who? You, you have to buy it from Toys R Us. No. <laughs> oh, That's about gosh. much of ten percent off. But they didn't. They sent us the style savvy, but they didn't send us the uh, Federation Force. Uh, and it sucks that I still gotta go to Target to go get my Tokyo Mirage session. You still haven't gotten. Tokyo Mirage Session. The first check that I get in September is all video games. It's uh, um, it's that one. I am set sooner. Uh, um, Axiom Verge comes out that day. Uh, let's see what else. I still need. That's cross buy on Vita, right? With PS4. Is that cross buy? Axiom Verge. It may be. I bought it so long ago. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. I really want to play it on Vita, but, like, I don't know. I feel like Vita's the perfect place for that, but I've been playing it on PS4 on my nice TV, so. I'll get. I'll be getting back into that game. I think I'm almost done with it, but I think i got to go back and find the special weapons and stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been trying to fill out the map lately, so that's kind of like what I've been doing on that. But enough Nintendo talk, because this is a PlayStation podcast. Yeah. Even though we would like to see Nintendo games on PlayStation someday. I'm at that no, point. No, we, we need to keep Nintendo games on Nintendo. I agree. No, uh, I agree I'm at that them. point. I'm at that point where I'm just like, give me... Give me Nintendo on PlayStation so I can just keep one console no, instead of spending money no, on two. No, no, no. I've never done this one. Like we so. said, like y'all said last week, Sony has 12 other developers to make their games, so... Well, that's right. That's, that's, <laughs> to me, that's what gives them that name, so hold on to that name. Yeah. Oh, anyways, what have you guys been playing? Tales of Hysteria, both of you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, almost done, I'm almost done. So. And, the, and, the, and I'm just starting. Um, I've been playing. I actually started Chess Cause Three, and it's one of the most jankiest controls games ever. And this is coming from Square Enix and Avalanche. <laughs> uh, you know, Avalanche who did Mad Max. I there's no lock on on the on that game. You can't. You, there's no speed run like you know the upgrade character to speed quicker. Um, the control like for some of the grenades and everything is off. It it's really mind boggling. The physics in the cars are horrendous. Like you can't even drift in the game. So if you're going too fast. And you try to do a handbrake or anything to like you know kind of drift to do a turn, it would spin your car almost uh like kind of like not 180, but it would make it to a point where you'll drift, you'll turn, and it'll keep on sliding with you not having nothing, no no acceleration's not on, the uh, brake button's not on, it'll keep drifting to the point where you're almost falling off the road. <laughs> so like the I'm like. This is not good. Uh, I, I guess I gotta keep playing more to get better, but it's uh, I don't know why people like this game. I know it's trying to be funny, but I'm just like if I want a funny open world game, I'll play Saints Row Three. I, I heard. I mean, I, I heard good things, and I do remember watching a few people uh, play it. And it, you put it, it just looks fun. Like it's not. It doesn't take the game doesn't. Or the genre doesn't, well, not genre, the game and the series mm-hmm. doesn't take itself seriously. Uh, but I, to me, when I watched, uh, I think it was Lullaby Bear on Twitch, and it, just, it actually just, it looked like a lot of fun. Like, obviously, I can't tell based on the controls uh, when she's playing it. Um, but I can see how, uh, yeah, controls would t- you know, turn you off in the game. That, that's too bad. Yeah. It, well, it's it's weird that Square Enix allowed Avalanche to bring out a game like this with the way that it controls, and then you, pl- I keep going back to Sleeping Dogs on how that just plays better. The good the controls of Sleeping Dogs is just like it's so top notch that once you play Just Cause Three, you'd be like, wait, I so I can't lock on, I can't zoom in to get a better shot. Um, I I. I guess I'm fine with the grappling hook, but it really doesn't do nothing. The wing set that they give me uh, could almost do an instant death because it's going too fast, and it's just like this. No, this this is all kinds of confusing. So yeah. Um, other than that, uh, Metro Prime Echoes I played last weekend. Left, Left for Dead, even though I know this games are not for PlayStation. Um, and that's about it. Uh, oh, and Metroid 2, Return of Samus for the uh, 3DS. That's all I've been playing. That's a few games. I it kind is. of want... I think I kind of want Portal 2 as a re- as a remake for PS4. I think we'll fa- eventually see everything from PS3 come to PS4. All the big, I, big ones, yeah. I mean, which uh, we'll get into later. Yeah. We've got some remasters. Maybe. Maybe. But, uh, if they do a remaster, they need to definitely do it for part one and leave, leave the other two alone. Part one needs to be... Yeah, we'll get into that later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been playing Destiny a little bit, uh, but I've been playing a lot of Axiom Verge just trying to fill out that map. It's a, it's a big map. This is a, that is a very large Metroid game. 
and I really want a new Metroid game that's like Axiom Verge. Like, I've been playing Super Metroid on my 3DS, but I've been ke- I keep going back to Axiom Verge because it's like mechanically and just because it's you know up to date oh. and con- turns the controls and stuff. The music's so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and it yeah. just I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just want Nintendo to do something like this for Metroid. It's so, so funny you mentioned uh, Super Metroid. So uh, while I was in Indiana, one of the things was that uh, I was going to bring my friend to make a Yarn Yoshi because his toys are us didn't get it. In exchange for that, he gave me the Super NES version of Super Metroid. Nice. Sweet. So, nice. But I, I had to give it to my friend who was looking for it, so yeah. Nice. <laughs> I said happy birthday and Merry Christmas. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. It was 50 bucks there. I'm like, dang. Dang. But yeah, oh, Axiom man. Verge, uh, yeah, such a good game. Uh, really, I, I'm really going to buy it on the Wii U. I, I'm gonna try to That's going to gonna be nice more. to have the map on the gamepad. Honestly. And off TV play also. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's going to be, like, really, really nice because, like, that's the one thing about that game where I'm just like, Ugh, i got to bring out my map, i got to pause it, i got to keep going. So it would be nice just to, like, look up or look down for a minute. For right. I mean, those are, like, minor issues that wouldn't exist if the Wii U didn't exist. So thanks, Nintendo, for giving me something else to think about while I'm playing PlayStation. <laughs> Jerks. Just kidding. <laughs> I love Nintendo. But uh, we're going to move into our next segment. Adam, what did you no, pick up this week? What? No, Adam didn't tell us what he's playing. Tales of Hysteria. I'm just playing Tales. Uh, I did... I, I, play, I, haven't play, I haven't uploaded them yet, but I, I, uh, I think I'm on part two or part three of Song of the Deep. That's what I was with the axe about and, that. And, uh, and I know it's a, it's a short game, and that's on it's like... It's kind of like... I'm glad of playing it in between this other game, because... I think I probably beat that game in a quick two-day sitting. So, uh, but uh, I think it's a I think it's a great game. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect. I'd probably like right now give it like a seven point five eight. Uh, but I'm more interested to see what because it, uh, it was produced or assisted by GameStop. So. I'm uh, kind of interested to see what kind of deals they got because they got three, three or four games in the works. So yeah, it's, it's the first mm-hmm. one, so uh, quite impressive with the England Sonic doing that. And it's it is quite simple and but fun too. Like it, you don't have to have this crazy AAA game in order to be good. But uh, yeah, I'm, I have a feeling I'm probably gonna knock those two games out the next week. Uh, well, when I come back. This after this weekend, so not before the next show probably, but I'm hoping to be done by next weekend, and then I'll I'll have to start something new, you know? oh boy, <laughs> which will be nice. But that's what you get with JRPGs, right? Like they are they're at least 50 hour games or more. I think I when I beat Tales of Symphonia, and I, I did mostly everything in that game. I I think it was just under 70 hours. I'm shocked uh, about that. This, this one is, I'm in, I think I'm like 35, 36 right now. And I think most people, I think they're in the 50 hour range. But if you did, I've, I've done pretty much all the optional quests in, in the game. So, so far that I, I can do. Um, so, we'll see. But, uh, and this type of the game, when I'm going through it once, I want to do everything. I want to experience the game. I'm not rushing to, to beat it. Um, I'm experiencing the game, the story. So, and that's why I like about other series like Final Fantasy is just like, uh, and same with I guess the new Zelda coming out too. That it's like that. So it's like, no, I'll get to the main story, but I want to see the world. I you know, that you you know you created. That's why you need Wii U and Xenoblade Chronicles X so you can lose your mind. <laughs> I just lose yourself in, into uh, what they created. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's such a great game. That, yeah. uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's all I'm playing still. I really cannot wait for that Final Fantasy XII HD. Oh, goodness. Drawing myself in that game again. I know. I need to, like... Here, I'll, here, I'll, jump, into, I'll jump into that. Because I got... We got a bunch of strategy guides. Nice. Uh, nice. 
Nice. Uh, I got a few today, so uh, I got that. And... I got that, and I got the Dragon Quest. Uh, Ooh. Was... Ooh. Is that the one for, is that like the 3DS one? DS. Yeah, yeah and then... So I said the PlayStation Two, you got eight. Nice. Oh, uh, I cannot wait for that game to come out. Kingdom Hearts. Nice. Just kind of nice, and I didn't have this one going back because I had the other ones, but a uh, nice full booklet of Lightning Returns because I still haven't played this game, so I'm surprised I haven't because I, I actually I like Thirteen. Uh, I like a lot of people. Uh, really. I, I really like what I, played a, I liked what I played at 13 too. It's just uh, they there was like this like system killing bug in the PlayStation 3 version before they patched it like when it, right when it came out and I happened to hit it in my PlayStation 3. I decided to get it fixed because of Final Fantasy 13 and I was like 25 hours in and I didn't want to restart. No, I didn't have that problem when I, I played through the game, but. My perfect, you had to do like you had to do something like really here. specific. Uh, so good. Uh, here, mm. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah Anthology is the one with four and Chrono Trigger in it, right? Uh, no, that's that's the um, Chronicles. Chronicles. Yeah, this one's the Anthology, which is the four and five. I'm uh, sorry, five and six. Um, okay, I always get those two oh, mixed see, up. That's what I was about to ask. If that one was the four and five one. Uh, yeah, so I want to get that one, but see, I'm, I'm looking for... It has everything. This one, like, this is perfect. It has everything. It has the music disc with it. And, oh, nice. Uh, I, have, I have all of them complete. Black I had nine. It's in nine. I can't seem to track down, so I might have to order that. But I'm only ordering those when I see a good deal. I'm not going to pay top crazy collector's dollar. If I see a deal, then I'll, I'll pick it up. But, uh, oh, you're trying to get nine in a good condition? The case yeah, the but... Uh, I got a bunch of PS3 games, like a bunch of PS3 games. Uh, we got here again. F1 2014. <laughs> I, saw the, I saw the yellow box. I thought that was Naughty Bear. <laughs> uh, got a wrestling game. Yeah. Like how I wonder how that game was. I know they made a big uh, spec ops. about it. Oh, yeah, gosh, spec ops was amazing. Such a good game. Uh, spec ops was amazing. We got Ninja Gaiden and Sigma, the first one. Ooh. Super cheap. Uh, Lego Movie, the video game. Oh, Lego games are fun, right? They're just simple. I'm looking forward to playing these games with my kid. Uh, the Godfather 2. Got that one. And here's one you like. I didn't get the sequel, and I won't get to play the sequel. Bayonetta. Uh, the Dragon Rage Inquisition. You know, I'm not going to play that because I, I played through it on the PS4, so it's just... I had to complete the collection. Uh, Don't worry, cause I look, I got it for PS4 and uh and um PS3. What else? Oh, I have. So this is Buzz Game for uh, PS3. I think it came on other systems where you, it's like a quiz game and you, you buzz in four controllers wireless. So there was two games. There was a TV and a, and a world. So I now have the world to complete my collection. Oh, Buzz. Nice. Adventures of Tintin. <laughs> got that. Oh, was that a double disc one? Double disc one, yeah. No, he lives in Canada, so a lot of the stuff has French on it. Yeah, this one has, yeah, has French. Uh, no, yeah, it does. This this one has French, but not not usually. Uh, I've never seen that. Legend, uh, Legend of War, History Channel thing, uh, Toy Story three. Oh my gosh, Toy Story three is amazing. Uh, and this is one I got at Toys R Us today. This this Pac Man. Um, was it Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures 2? Yeah, for the cartoon. For the cartoon, and then the last one, the last, uh, I think, I think I have a copy of this already, but I think I bought it because it was, like, three dollars, and I want to replace some of my cases, so it was, uh, Ninja Gating, uh, 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 uh which is, that the Razor, is that the Razor's Edge version, or is that just the regular one? The I regular. I think it's just the regular, yeah. Yeah, so those are my few pickups this week uh, to add to my <laughs> crazy. I've got a yeah, pile actually, back here on the shelf. That when I get back from camping this weekend, I have to start and catalog and upgrade my database. Uh, my uh, my ninja guide in is uh, the black case. Uh, oh, okay. 
for the PS3, and then for my uh, then I got Ninja Gaiden 3 for the Wii U. Um, but I still have my I still have my regular Ninja Gaiden for my Xbox. So. Nice, nice. I picked up a few things this week, but uh, they're not here yet. So we're gonna have to wait till next week to see what I got. That's what happened to me last week. Yeah. Ed, what'd you get? Um, I didn't get nothing. I must be getting stuff in a couple of weeks. Uh, but nothing at the moment. Uh, so that's my picks. So, Yay! Yay! Hey, we have sometimes we have to get paid, and sometimes things don't come across. Deals happen. Yeah. Well, I gotta still buy my uh Great America ticket uh tomorrow, and then uh. So, I keep looking that. for bundles, and I can never seem to find because I'll have everything in a bundle, and I'll be missing like a few things. Um, so I've kind of been watching out for a few things, but uh, like there's a game, um, Eye of Judgment, which eventually I have to get, and there's a bunch of cards set, but I'm not wearing it, willing to pour money into that yet. But uh, eventually, I want to get it hmm. for my collection. The original PlayStation I. I have both, yeah. I have the uh, PS4 and PS3. It's funny, like, I I bought the I on PS4 launch, and, yeah, since getting the Al- Elgato, there's no point to the I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for uh, Lee from Nerd Overdrive to send me my new, freshly built PC to start... Really coming in 2017. Right. Yeah, I know. That's what it feels like sometimes. Sorry, Lee. I love you. Chop chop. Yeah, he has a four day vacation. So I know. I know. We're gonna. I think we might live stream it or something on Monday. He kept asking me if I was off on Monday, and I said yeah. And we're gonna like. I'm gonna watch him, or we're gonna converse about it, or something. I don't know what we're doing. We're doing something for for Nerd Overdrive. That's all I know. Okay. So that's gonna be cool. Chop chop Lee. Just chop, kidding. Chop. Sipping his fancy beverages in his ivory tower, playing WoW. What fancy beverage does he have? I don't know. <laughs> Kool Aid don't count. <laughs> <laughs> wow, two hundred dollars, crazy. <laughs> oh man, what do you say we get into some news? Da, 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 da. News. Oh man. So who who saw this coming? Final Fantasy XV delay is confirmed to November 29th. The rumor was true. Uh, and confirmed. People, and people lost their minds, getting upset about it. I know. Uh, it, I I'm not upset over two months. I think it's. We waited. We waited ten years. What's two months extra? Um, this is not a delay where Watch Dogs was delayed. Yeah. Multiple times. Uh, or your Mighty Number no. 9 that was delayed multiple times. So this is... Uh, it. Where I think... I could, the people get ups, trolls, internet, get upset for anything these days. So um, I'm actually quite happy because it, 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 it fills a slot void where I'll, I'll play it later, and I've got other games on the radar that will fill that slot now, so um, yeah, it's not a huge deal for me, like I'm looking forward to it, if i got to wait two more months big deal Right. Uh, I mean, if, plus, you, if you want to say the year, then I'd be like really? <laughs> I mean, yeah. plus it's close to the holiday season around Christmas time, so that's true. People, people, I mean, that's a good time to be like, oh, would I get this for a Christmas gift, instead of people rushing it to get it and stuff yeah the reason why they said it was delayed is so they could fit the day one patch on the disc. Yeah. Because they don't want to. It's a single major majority of the uh, single player game, and they don't want people to have to connect to the internet to download a three five gig patch. So. Well, they want day one. They want you, to, you know, to go. So I mean, I think that's valid. Um, uh, so I wonder how 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 many gigs is this game going to be? It's going to be huge. I mean, it just. I mean, the game looks visually amazing. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. 40, 50 gigs, probably. 
Yeah, at I least. Don't know. I don't know. So. It's a Blu-ray, so it's it's got lots yeah. of room. Sticking with Final Fantasy 15, there's an Ultimate Collector's Edition, but it doesn't come with the season pass. Uh, this this week at Gamescom, uh, there's some clarity to the Ultimate Collector's Ed- Edition because it says bonus content, uh, downloadable items, and in-game item packs, uh, but it does not include the uh, season pass. So, but it's still $270 if you want one. <laughs> Those Good luck with that. Hard fans. It comes with a almost a 200 uh, page art book, uh, some special soundtracks, exclusive play arts, uh, figure, some cards, and a cool looking box. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a niche for it. So. Yeah, that's kind of surprising though. Two hundred and seventy dollars and doesn't come with season pass. That's a, that's a that's a pretty penny. That's a pretty shiny penny for this. <laughs> They're gonna go towards other games that really matter. Two hundred seventy dollars. That's like <sighs> math is hard right now. That's four like triple A games and like two indies. I could be playing. Could be playing XCOM and Gears of War and uh, Tomb Raider and South Park. And Shovel Knight. Not for me. Last Guardian, Paper Mario, uh, so you're going to that shit. <laughs> I'll have to pass games that I miss over the summer. <laughs> uh, and, Ge- and, and Gears 4. Yeah. Everything's a collector's edition these days. It doesn't yeah. mean anything anymore. Uh, I know. They, dude, collector's editions go down in price so fast re- recently. Like, I thought about getting the Halo 6 Collector's Edition when it came out, and I was like, no, I'm not spending $250, even though I have all the other Halo Collector's Editions. The other day I looked online, it was 54 bucks for the $250 Collector's Edition. So Halo 5? Yeah. And, like, the Gears one's probably going to be the same way, so I'm like, I'll just wait. I mean, I, I find no purpose in some of these collector's items, because I'm just like, what are you going to... Unless you're going, unless you're really pristine, uh, with your um, extra items for your collection, I can understand that. But I, I just want the game. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, like, the, if you're gonna spend money on collectibles for a game, there's much nicer ones than the ones that come with the collector's edition. So, that's. I mean, that's been my reasoning lately, at least. So. Also, did you see Lares Infinite uh, vinyl collection? Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, uh, so Res Infinite for the PSVR, they're getting a vinyl collection. Oh, uh, um, Matt. Is that something Matt's gonna drool over on NGR next week? <laughs> yeah, he'll probably yeah. drool over it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like Res is his type of game, and he loves vinyl. And yeah, I just feel like Matt's like crying on the floor right now, really happy. I'll probably post it on his page and be like, whenever you get your life together from working too much, come look at this. Yeah. Ah, man. Well, speaking of collector's editions, we're not talking about them anymore. We're going backwards. EA strongly hints that Mass Effect games will get remastered. Uh, Game Informer did an interview about a year ago with uh, Patrick uh, Soderlund, who's the executive vice president of EA, and he, last year he said that EA was focusing on new games and new IP rather than re, like uh, remastering their old IP. And this year they had an interview and asked him if anything has changed. Uh, here's a quote from Game Informer. One of the things I asked you last year when we sat down at E3 was about Mass Effect. At the time, there was two publishers that hadn't really dipped their toes into the remaster world. You and Activision. Activision has since released a number of remasters or ports, which are really, really bad. I'm inserting that quote. Uh, And now they are working on a full remaster of Modern Warfare. Revisiting this this as a last man standing on remasters, has anything changed like a Mass Effect trilogy remaster? Uh, Soderlund responded, What changed is that there is proof in the market that people want it, maybe more than there was when we spoke last. There were some... uh, there were some that did it before, 
but I think there's even more clear evidence that uh, this is something that people really want. The honest answer is we are absolutely actively looking at it. I can't announce anything today, but you can expect us you can expect us most likely to follow our fellow partners in Activision and other companies that have done this successfully. Uh, they go on later to talk about Mass Effect and uh, even possibly Dead Space in this interview. So, Yeah, there, there's a space for it. I mean, the people that didn't get to play these games in the previous generation, um, and it kind of feels that it was, it, usually it's not the main company that, like, just because the publisher, yeah. EA, or whoever does the game or publishes the game, it's not really the company that has been working on the remastered. Mm -hmm. Right, um, like Bluepoint, for example, is a big studio that does the remasters. They did the Dishonored Definitive Edition, they did Uncharted, they did, uh, uh, they helped uh, port Halo 1 and 2 to the Master Chief Collection, so, I mean, there's, there's studios out there that specialize in this stuff, and it it, that's how they stay in business, and then it saves EA from pouring their own resources into it. So, yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, I think I, I know. I think there's a space for it, and I think it's good. And then uh, I think some of the games that you probably didn't check out on the previous generation, and it's like, well, I got an HD and all the DLC, DLC included, and it's <coughs> half the price of a a newer game. Right. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, I would love to see Mass Effect remastered. Like, I, I, I just want the first one remastered so they could fix the turbo uh, driver mechanics. Right. I would. I would love to see Mass Effect. I know this is this would be like so much work, but I would love to see the gameplay of two mixed with the customization with one, and just streamline it across all three games. And I know that's not going to happen. That's like that's such a lot of work, and that would almost be like remaking the entire game. I uh, take the, I the farming take planets though was terrible. Too late to fix that. But, uh, the little going down the box, gathering materials or whatever. Robot like, voice. Got out the buggy. And, uh, that was awful. The first game. Robot voice. Uh oh. Really? Uh oh. Yep. Uh oh. See, so, yeah, this is what happens when you talk sometimes. I know. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would actually take the gameplay of Mass Effect Three and put them in. Uh, I mean, I kind of, I kind of almost loop Mass Effect Two and Three into the same bubble. The same thing. I think. I guess Three just felt faster because I kind of how how they had the energy bars set it up set up at the top. I think I kind of like that one better. Um, but yeah, if they did that for part one, shoot, I'll be good to go. Yeah, I uh, I actually really like the story of one. I think the story in one is the best, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Saren is awesome. Saren's like an awesome villain. He's a, he's an awesome villain, but I think two is still better. I think I still like two, uh, better. Like two, three, and then one. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still I don't, love that trilogy, though. I know, Mass Effect's so good. I can't wait for Andromeda. Andromeda's going to be amazing. I, I would actually like to see a Dead Space rema remaster, too, though. That would be cool. Ah! <laughs> robot voice. What's going on? I don't know why I never have robot voice. If you leave and come back, it'll... It'll... Usually... <laughs> That usually fixes the problem for Edward. Oh, wait. Oh, music. Oh, I guess we can talk about this afterwards, but... Google I know. It's going to be I'm going to come back. <laughs> oh. Man. Yeah. I... Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was just, I was just going to say that. Um... Going through the Mass Effect series, I'm like, even if they do bring it back and they do an HD remake, um, it would be good, I think, for all three because the frame rate would be better. Because sometimes in the uh, Mass Effect series, there is a stutter during some of the cutscenes. Um, but if they could get a 60 frames per second and, or just get a little bit more smoother uh, for it to move fast, I'll be down for that. I'll be cool. Yeah, I'm back. Yay. 
No yeah. more robot boys. That's odd. That never happens. I still really like Mass Effect 3's ending, or their original ending. I want to point that out. I want everybody to know that I thought the ending was perfect. And I think the ending in itself told a story that people just missed. And it's so weird. I, I actually got, when I brought the trilogy, it's, uh, it updated the system to my, where I, I couldn't get the original ending. I had to take that new ending. I'm just like, oh, this is oh stupid. man, you're missing out. I think yeah. it's overrated. What, Mass Effect 3? Mass, just Mass in Effect in general. Yeah. Well, That's just my opinion. It's, it's because it's a Western RPG. <laughs> it, it doesn't say J in front of it, Adam. No it's J, only, no sale. It's the only good Bioware game to come up from them. So. Uh, fall little, I think fall I little angel my probably favorite game in a long time from EA. Uh, but... Um, uh, J Empire is on iOS, so well, can I, like, those Knights of the Old Republic. I'll go Mass Effect too, and, 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 and it's a game almost falls victim. Like when I bring up Watch Dogs, I think the shooter element is not great in that game. Uh, versus oh, Mass Effect too. Yeah, they like could use. For, I agree. They could use better like cover mechanics and shooting mechanics. Yeah, like to me, like that's. I'm I'm talking story aside, so I'm just talking controls. I think it's mm. they're not that great. Uh, no, nah, the controls kind of suck, especially in one. Oh, oh, yeah, like, oh! Oh my gosh! If you if you play if you play Mass Effect one and then you go play Mass Effect two and three, it feels like you're going from uh, Atari, Atari to... to Gears of War. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I know this place is what you saw the uh, 4K video of the new Gears trailer or whatever that came out this week. Yeah, yeah check I it heard out. it's beautiful in 4K. My screen's only 720p, so I couldn't watch it in 4K. So, well, no one has a 4K TV just yet. Yeah, oh, you could buy one. I don't. I don't have one. But... Yeah, I like my TV. It's uh, it's a little small. I wish it was bigger, but. I mean, 1080p TVs are probably going to be real cheap soon, so maybe I'll look into upgrading next year to that. Well, I, I know uh, Rebecca from Nerd Overdrive, uh, when we were talking about it before we was recorded, was talking about, like, 4K TVs are probably going to become more accessible and easier to buy, like the prices of them going Yeah, for, 4K, but you're going to want to want, for, if you're looking for, like, best graphical fidelity, you're going to want to look for ones with HDR. And Xbox, the Xbox One S only works with certain types of HDR, apparently. I don't know if you guys listened to Podcast Unlocked or not, but they had an episode like about yeah. a month ago about 4K TVs. Yeah, because yes. uh, uh, Ryan was saying that uh, he was uh, when he was reviewing the SNM, they got one of the uh, uh, they got one of those kind of TVs. Yeah. Or, but he said he couldn't really see any difference until. Hopefully, when Gears Four comes out, that he'll be able to tell the difference. Right. Well, the first the did. first game that supports it is uh, Forza Horizon. Forza Horizon. 3, so uh, that's gonna be interesting. So, okay. Well, we've talked yeah. about Nintendo and Xbox and PlayStation <laughs> podcast. So, uh, well, we're still waiting for Neo. That's coming. I know. Out in what three more September, weeks? September. That show after September seventh is gonna be a big one. Yeah, so. three weeks away. Yeah. Uh, could be great. Can't leave. Yeah. Adam, Adam, you like collectibles. I do like collectibles. How do you feel about Lego Dimensions? Yeah. Is that going to be your next venture after you get all your infinities? Um, probably. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it gets pricey once you start dipping into this stuff. Um. Well, uh, you I, better I, better get on this PlayStation starter pack. Because the PlayStation 4 starter pack exclusive is Supergirl, which I'm not a big Lego guy, but I love me some Supergirl, so I may have to get this starter pack. Yeah, so like you're forced to buy just a girl, she won't get her, which I think is wrong. Well, I wonder if they're just going to do the Infinity thing while she'll come out six months later like they did with Boba Fett for Disney Infinity. <laughs> right, right. Oh my gosh, Boba Fett was so hard to find when it finally came out. Like to normal people. Ugh. 
Yeah, it's something I'll probably. Uh, I guess I think I've seen sales of that uh, of Lego, but uh, I, I try to take advantage of the deal, especially like Infinity stuff that's going away now, and, and the Supercharger set for uh, Skylander. It's like there is no way if I can pick it up locally for one third or one fourth the price. Uh, I, I might also jump on it now because shipping always kind of kills you online. Um, so, preach, preach, preach. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think it's something I'll dive into eventually. And it seems like most companies are going. So, Disney's out of it. And well, a lot of rumors are saying they might go to Infinite, go to Lego, right? That's right. Like the big thing. So, and then is Skylanders jumping out now? Uh, no, they got a new one coming out soon. They got a new one this year, but usually they have, like, a round coming up for next year. So, yeah, I guess maybe that's why they were clearing out. Cause I, don't, I don't think this one did very well, Superchargers. Um, you know, it didn't. Um, so, they, I mean... They got a car... <laughs> I always jump, jump in the... Yeah, like, GameStop I was in today, the guy was just like, oh, man, you, you play the games? I'm like, ah, no, I... I just collected my. I mean, I haven't even played the game to know, <laughs> but I've watched the. Uh, I've watched a bunch of Twitch people like, uh, and I understand the concept of what they're. Like. It's a sandbox game, right? So. Yeah, uh, I just feel like yeah, I feel like Infinity was way too ambitious for like, for them to be like cost effective with that. Because like, if they would have just gone and done a, freaking Skylanders Gauntlet type game, or even like a small Diablo Light type game. They would have like. I feel like all their all their costs went into development, and they didn't make it back because developing all these different worlds, plus campaigns for each set of figures, plus the toy box was just like. I mean that that I mean like uh, Infinity 2.0 didn't make any money. Mm-hmm. They printed something like they thought the Hulk was going to be super popular, and they ended up printing like. I don't know, triple the amount of figures that they ended up selling of the Hulk. And, like, two-thirds of your inventory is still on the shelves? That's got to cost a ton of money for a figure, let alone, like, the play sets for the games. Especially when they split the game, they made the whole toy box section its own game. Yeah. Right. All right. right. Yeah, so. Uh, Yeah, it's something I'll jump into. I was looking at Lego today in Toys R Us. But uh, so, you know, like Christmas gifts for my son, <clears throat> my oldest, and uh, and I was still checking out that Destiny stuff. I think it was it's just pretty cool. Yeah, uh, the uh, Mega Blocks one. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I think I'd like to have that, but I was like, nah, I'm, I'm not gonna spend money on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm actually kind of shocked that Call of Duty, uh, Assassin's Creed, um, Destiny, and uh, Halo got exclusively with Mega Blocks to release. Fi- uh, it's like, because it's because Lego won't do anything that uh, uh, revolves around violence. Like like uh, some reason like uh, WB wanted to make a Lego Mortal Kombat game and they wouldn't allow them because Mortal Kombat promotes gory violence and right. so it's like shooting guns and stuff. Oh, for the toys. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, sure, I'm like that must got Ghostbusters. Hey, y'all must got Star Wars, and that have violence in it. Yeah, but there's no it's like that's there's no blood, and it's not like mature content. Well, like, it's like, even with the new. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think the new Star Wars movie. Like he gets shot and he's bleeding, but you never actually see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it's it's more for the uh, other company, right? They can capitalize on it. Yeah. I mean, Mega Mega Box needs all the help they can get anyway. I mean, they're not never ever gonna beat Lego, so. Wow, I mean, Lego well, wasn't Lego has been in trouble a few times in their. Uh, yeah, process. but now with they like they got the Lego, they got DC and Marvel now and Star Wars like. Oh yeah, as a company hold, they're in better shape yeah. now, uh, but they have, almost like Marvel in a way, been in trouble with bankruptcy. Yeah, but now like Lego's prices. It's never gonna change. Like I think it's, I think it's ten cents a block. I think the way the way it works, or ten whatever. I don't want to calculate it's in the U.S. to be, but uh, 
it's it's always been expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And since we got this, like Toys R Us got the exclusives, you know, you, there's a lot of them that you can't get unless you go to that store, unless you come to our store to get it. Because even the Lego store won't carry it because of the contract deals. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. That that must be why, like, when you go to, like, when I went to Disney World and stuff, they have a Lego store down there. But, like, the stuff that they can only sell at Toys R Us or whatever... They don't sell there like some of the Legos, like some of the Star Wars stuff, and mm-hmm. some of the Marvel stuff that is exclusive to like Toys R Us or Target or whatever. They don't sell there at the Lego store, so it's because uh, they they'll make more money selling it at Toys R Us or Target than they right. would at um, their stores. Right. Because uh, once yeah, a lot of that stuff, you know, once they see the sales, you know, the sales numbers of it, they're reordering. The reordering could go quicker, so and they could keep uh, sending more out um, and continue to make more money because Legos barely don't drop in price until maybe five or six months after it's been released and they're discontinuing that item. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, sticking with uh, DC, Injustice 2 released a new trailer that uh, probably coincides with the su- release of the Suicide Squad movie. It's uh, Harley Quinn and Deadshot are in this trailer, which uh, I'm actually pretty excited for Injustice. I'm not a huge fighting game guy, but I really enjoyed uh, the last one. It, it's, it, it's, it seems to have this following, right, because the last one did quite well. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, think, I believe it was a PlayStation Plus, a uh, free game at one point. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, it was but, kind of like the success of Mortal Kombat 9, I think. 9 or 10. Nine. Uh, I think it's 9 because the gameplay that they took off, uh, like the uh, mechanics of uh, Mortal Kombat 9, they put into Injustice. So it kind of felt similar, but, you know, this is a superhero. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll never play because I'm never good at fighting games, but uh, visually it looks really cool. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to continue the story from the first one because the story would, like, I read the comics outside the first game too, and that, but the whole story of Injustice was really, really cool about how uh, Superman, like, they the Joker ki- tricked Superman into killing Lois, so he uh, ended up killing the Joker, and then it caused this like alternate universe rift or whatever, and the superheroes ended up like fighting each other, and it was really cool. It was cool. I think the second one is. I think they said it was supposed to be the original story. Uh, yeah. We shall see. Yeah, I actually, I actually really like the uh, the armor, like the RPG elements of this game. I want to know how that's gonna, because there's got to be so much balancing in a fighting game anyway. And if you're gonna add like, oh, well, you can add a chess piece to Supergirl to make her stronger, or you can get her better cape so she can be faster. Like, how is that gonna affect a fighting game? The rewards, the risks and rewards. Yeah, it's just gonna be. I, that's gonna be so hard to balance. I feel like. Mm. Because well, fighting games are like really hard to balance anyway. I think they're just keep it simple. Like those stats won't be. Uh... Right. Yeah, but the slightest change can can like really affect a fighting game. That's true. That's true. Uh... I, mean, I I I understand that they will probably keep it simple. I don't doubt you there, because that if they made it any more complex than like slightly boosting stats, then like you're gonna have some issues in balancing a fighting game. Mm, well, if they do that, then you know they'll just have to turn it to a Japanese player and deal with it. Yeah, because some of their fighting games, ooh, ooh. you're talking about <laughs> complication. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Well, speaking of Japanese fighting games, Konami is not making a fighting game, but they are releasing their first Metal Gear game after Kojima leaves. It's called Metal Gear Survive. Oh, I didn't think we would see it this soon. I, I will admit, if I kind of do like the uh, n- not the title, but the artwork that they put on Survive. 
with the one of the V's having a great thing. And it kind of looks cool to me. Like, I would wear a t-shirt or a hoodie with that. As for the game itself, well, the trailer itself, because I don't know how the game is going to be. Um, I guess I'm interested to see what it's really about. Because they did say that it's more of a stealth game, not like an action game. Yeah. Um, so. Well, that's to I me mean, like, okay, so and this is the viewpoints of a few other people too. It's, then call it and do it. Don't continue off the same universe. You had Metal Gear Rising. Um, what was the other game that was separate in the series? Uh, Peace Walker, Acid, yeah. like, Portable Ops. That, like, that's a lot of biggest complaint too. Is just like. Don't continue it off the main, the main uh, store, uh, main series. Like, what is it separate. like? Training missions. Yeah, like it's, it's like separate, but uh, that's been a lot of pet peeve with people. It's just like they're just they're trying to catch and grab and continue on, and uh, I hope it fails. <laughs> this remind this reminds me of what Capcom tries to do with Resident Evil, like. This reminds That's me right. of... That's right, they remember have. That, remember that, sh- that shooter that came out this summer? The Umbrella Core or whatever? Yeah. The Resident Evil shooting game? Like, that's that's what this reminds me of, but Metal Gear instead of Resident Evil. That's all this reminds me of, is this weird, stupid spinoff game that they're going to try to make money off the Metal Gear name, and real fans of the series are going to be like, oh, well, that's, that's dumb. And, like, I don't yeah. think Metal... Like, as impressive as Metal Gear is as a series. Like, I don't think Metal Gear has a like a what would you call it? Like a casual type. Like Resident Evil, most I feel like most casual gamers know Resident Evil more than they know Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. And so like, I feel like they're trying to capitalize on what Resident Evil does by putting their name on things and just slapping the Resident Evil name on it. Whereas... I don't think Metal Gear has the same effect that way. I feel like Metal Gear is more of a hardcore gamer's game. Well, I don't even I don't think it's even that. I think sometimes uh definitely with this Metal Gear Survivor thing, um I think they're trying they're just trying to let people know that, you know, they haven't given up on the series. Uh so um, because we didn't, I don't even know if Metal Gear Five even had any DLC planned for it. So uh, they're probably just trying to be like, well, we gotta in order for us to make you know some money still and keep this series re- uh, relevant, uh, we'll just pull out this little game like that. Now Resident Evil, Resident Evil, even on the other hand, that just became a cash a cash cow because it was popular for. For the first three games, and but because how well Metal, Resident Evil 4 did, pretty much Capcom thought, you know, we stick to this formula and we could keep pumping out these titles, it'll make, it'll make us money. Um, because of the truth, if that was the case, she Silent Hill would still be around right about now. Yeah, uh, it's remember that was the thing. Uh, speaking of Silent Hills. It's, I like Silent Hills. It's good yeah, stuff. it looked uh, what the series and as a, as, as a whole, whole, yeah, I like the series. Yeah. Okay, going way back. Uh, speaking of of Silent Hills, Capcom showed off a Resident Evil trailer today that looks like they're trying to do a similar thing, and it doesn't look as good. Did you watch? Did, did you watch the trailer with the girl with the girl running out? Uh, yeah, the new, one, the one that they the, released today or yesterday. Yeah, I, think I, I guess they, yeah, I guess they're trying to show off some of the gameplay elements because now they're saying that, you know, uh, hide or die, you know, or something like that, uh, where bells are playing a, uh, um, a big part of it. But I'm kind of thinking. I'm, I started thinking about this that uh, Resident Evil Seven seems to be turning out like um, what is that Tecmo game where you have to hide from Clock uh, Clockwork Towers or something like that? Clock Towers, mm. where you have remember. to run from the Mr. from the Scissor Man. You like you have to hide. Oh, uh, Clockwork Tower. 
the oh, PS2 right. game. Yeah. I think yeah. Game, game Informer did a, a, a replay of that game like a year ago. That's, yeah, that's what Resident Evil 7 is reminding me of. We're like going in that uh, route. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like something's off about this game. Like, as happy as I am that they're getting away from that uh, action-y thing that they tried with 6 and and 5, like, this something feels off. This doesn't feel like Resident Evil. This feels like they're trying to copy rather than be their own thing. It feels a lot like uh, Outlast is exactly mm-hmm. what this game re- looks like it's trying to be. And, like, yeah, that game was scary, but Resident Evil has, like, this different tone. Like, Outlast is just meant to scare you. Like, there's not really any resource management. There's not really any, like, uh, you know, puzzle solving. It's all, like, just explore this area, and, like, there's some light puzzle elements, but there's, it's more about the exploration and just getting the crap scared out of you rather than, like, surviving. Right. Yeah, well, that's... well, It's Clock Tower, yeah, that's the series. Um, I mean, I, I understand that they're trying to go for the creepy effect. Um, oh, but, uh, so we're talking about... Or the creepy effect, we're talking about the, the hiding mechanic? Is that what you're not liking? Or? Um... Well, it's not. It's not even that. I, I guess it's just a new way that they're doing the Resident Evil uh, franchise. It's just like okay, it seems like we got away from all the zombies and the craziness of Six and all the other games. So now it's kind of like this is a new chapter and this is a new take on the word Resident Evil. Yeah, like, like, the, it's like you know, it's 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 a different like horror, right? It's, it's horror, like this. You yeah. Know, trying to do, right? So. Yeah. But the survival part is, I guess, not being caught. It's more of the survival part. Where the survival part and the re- other Resident Evil is just make sure you manage your weapons well and, you know, you use your herbs. But it's kind of like, it's almost like you feel like they should start over, where like, like we're yeah. on level 7, but the other one had a story built at, like, the Umbrella Corporation. Like, it continued yeah. on and on, uh, and the story did make sense if you followed it. Uh, I don't know how this one plays into Umbrella, uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm The only thing I'm rooting for is because it's Capcom, and I feel like they need to restore their name. Um, yeah. I'm not. This isn't a Konami situation where I hope Konami just fails at everything. I want I want Capcom to succeed. Well, but I, this this I'm uh I don't know I'm it's I'm I'm on board I, I still like what I see. Um, part of me feels that uh, I, I presume VR is separate from this game. No, this is this. It can either be played on a TV or in VR. Or VR. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. It's. I, uh, I feel like that's a game that you probably want to play on VR. Yeah. What was that? Um, what was the last Alien game that came out that kind of Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Isolation? Colonel yes. Marines. No so isolation. Been, so yeah. it, it kind of feels like that's been put into a little bit in this game. Um, yeah, but then again, like that game is all about, like, yeah, it's about hiding, but it's also about using the environment to your advantage to get away from the alien. And this is more like. I don't know. There's something. I mean, it, it may it may also do that for this Resident Evil Seven, yeah. but because everything's in trailer form, we haven't we can, we can't say what's the what really is the gameplay of this of because it feels like you know it feels like there's a murderer that you're trying to escape. So that is the kind of the main thing we're we'll have to deal deal with. Um, it's like escaping a murderer instead of doing it with zombies and stuff. Yeah, which is gonna... which now gives because it sounded like the protagonist in this one was a female, but when they first showed up the, off the uh, Resident Evil Seven trailer, that it was a male. Well, the the first trailer was was for the demo 
that's on PlayStation, and that's separate from the entire game. So, like, the demo right. that you can download is not part of the, the final release. Okay. So, Dan, it's... So final Fantasy was like that, too, right? So, uh, yeah, like, the the one, the... What do you call it? The, uh, the Platinum demo? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. Mm. And then there's also that demo that came... Or the level that came with uh, Type-0 for Final Fantasy. That's also not part of the game. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a point, I guess, what they're trying to showcase with that is, like, this is what the game's graphics are going to look like and, and feel and atmosphere. Uh, I think we all miss the days of demos on disc in our PlayStation magazine. Oh, my gosh, whatever. that was awesome. Um, I can't tell you how many, how many hours I spent playing the demos on those games, like Bushido Blade and... And there's this game called Commando, which was this really crappy RTS, and uh. so I'm uh, not many companies do it like that anymore. So I'm uh, I wish they they would because it's uh, outside of that now. If I'm not following a game, I'm usually going to Twitch to check out a game someone playing it for me to be interested in it. Uh, but we have other avenues now for that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still on board. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a wait and see for me. I like Resident Evil 1 a whole lot, the remake for GameCube. And uh, I liked 0 a lot even though it had a lot of issues. But uh and 4, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's it for the news. Adam, give us the drop. 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 That was my that was my sick beat for the drop. Um, almost a quiet week. Well, no, we had a few games come out this week. Um, an old one, I guess. Well, I think it's old. I think it was on Vita for a while and PS3. Uh, Rainbow Moon. Oh my uh, gosh! It has been released uh, now on PlayStation Four. Um, I think it's average, okay. I don't know. Um, I think it's. I, I think it's. I think it's me. I think it's a game that. I'd just rather play on Vita if I was going to play this game. Uh, before you go on, Adam, uh, Limited Run Games uh, starting Friday. Uh, they're releasing physical copies of Shadow Complex and uh, Rainbow Light, Rainbow Moon or something like that. Uh, yeah, they got they had the pictures of it. I think it's limitedrungames.com. So right. I know for uh, uh, Shadow Complex, uh, and this is for PS4, both games. That they got like 6,900 copies of it. Yeah, the remastered. Yeah, that's coming. Yeah. Uh, also, would, that's got great reviews too. That's I think that's like in the eights uh, or eighties, depending on what review score you're checking out. Um, I would like to play Rainbow Moon again. I like that game. I've never heard of it. Oh, it's really oh, good. Really? I think it's really good. It's like this grid-based kind of RPG, and it's like I I really liked it. I just thought it was average. I didn't say it was terrible. Um, what else? Oh, hey, speaking of Just Cause 3, they released their uh, DLC content. They said do not buy it. <laughs> they and, gave it up. Yeah, so I haven't heard good things about it. Um, at least Mad Crave hasn't given it a score, but uh, I heard it was not good. Um, I, just, I, I, I don't know why. Uh, I guess I've just seen bold titles. Uh, other games that came out that are kind of average are Grow Up is one game, Bound. I heard Grow Up is having a ton of issues on PS4. Yeah. Like, like you can't. it's having the same issue that Tetris was having, uh, where you can't be connected online if you have this a certain amount of friends on your friends list. Oh my gosh! I I was listening to Giant Bomb this week, and they were saying they had so many issues playing that game, where like they couldn't even review, like do like a, a one of their quick looks or review it because it they wouldn't it just wouldn't play. Uh, what else came out? Uh, the, the Inverses Digital, uh, The Huntsman, uh, Winter's Curse, which is probably I'd say a skip because it's probably garbage. Uh, Absolute Drift Zen Edition. Don't know too much about that. Uh, Dungeon Punks. 
Um, what else came out for PS4? Uno. Classic, simple yeah. game of Uno. These games you're saying sound like really bad video games that they would... They they sound like fake games from really bad movies from the 80s. Yeah, they're just, they're just <laughs> they're digital games come out and people you like... Almost like when stuff comes out on Steam, it's just like endless uh, shovel work, that thing. But uh, another Hitman episode released, Bangkok, came out this week. Um, it's getting just above average reviews. Um, I think it's doing quite well with this whole episode base uh, series for themselves versus a full game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm talking. It's, I find it's a series. The series doesn't need a lot of love, but it, it still has a, a following that there are people still want more uh, of it. For me, I was like, bring me a, a decent movie. I don't know if the last movie was kind of cheesy B movie, but I kind of liked the one before that uh, Hitman movie. But uh, so that's what pretty much came out on PS4, uh, PS3. I believe didn't have any releases. Uh, nope. No, because the, the game I'm waiting for, Trials of Cold Steel 2, comes out in September. Um, and then Vita. Oh, I love Vita. New uh, Sex come out next next week. New Sex Man. So you got the Rainbow Moon update, which probably includes everything on the Vita. Uh, same with Dungeon Punks. Um, Gal Gun, Double Piece. Uh, that's getting great reviews. Um, is it getting great reviews? Yeah, it is, actually. The... the collector's edition that comes with the glasses, the glass cleaner that are just a pair of panties. <laughs> oh, I'm talking game aside here. People, yeah. Um, I mean, I've never played a Gal Gun game, but I'm, that was just funny, because I was watching the kind of funny thing where like they're like, <laughs> it's like a thing on their shows now. Shrine of the Wonder, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. Uh, and the Dice of Fate. Yeah, that's too long of a name of a video game. That that shouldn't happen. Like, uh, but uh, another uh, from Axis at Axis Games. Um, that's getting, you know, really good. That's in the eights. Uh, doing good scores. So that might be a game I might be checking out, or if I see it cheap, come down a few weeks for my Vita. Be another one to check out. Because um, happy love to my Vita. Uh, what else is going on? I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, not much else came on for Vita, so it was a quiet week. But uh, as we all know, it's coming to the end of the summer, and all the good stuff's coming soon. So that's it for the drop this week. Man, there's a. Uh, I think next week is like gonna start the big the big drop next week. Yeah. Dance X I think comes out next week, and mm-hmm. Madden and. Uh, Something else comes out next week too, but yeah, it's coming. Yeah, the reviews for Madden is co- are out. I haven't checked them yet. Yeah, I mean it's Madden. I mean, we'll see. This is the first first year though that Madden's on a different engine, so it's on Frostbite. All, everything on EA NEA stable is going to be running on Frostbite from now on, so that's going to be interesting. So, all right, well. We're going to dive into Topic of the Week, and uh, as you know, I was fully prepared for the show when we started, so Topic of the Week is, I want to talk about video game delays and announcements too far in advance, and I want to know what you guys think the proper way to handle a game's release, like announcement to release, and how delays should be handled. Based solely on the fact that Final Fantasy XV was delayed, and there was another game that got delayed recently too. That oh, uh, XCOM got delayed uh, about a month, and then there's there was one more game that got delayed. Didn't but below get delayed. Below, yes, below has been delayed and indefinitely. Thank you, Edward. I'm glad you're on the ball today, because I am. Um, yeah, it's it's. I, I think it's we don't we don't get the full story and I think it's it's it it, it comes uh, it's the publisher and the ones in control that are putting the pressure to get it out and get it and get get it on people's radar because the way our world is right now it's like pre orders pre orders DM like it, it's it's get the buzz going and uh, and I think it it gives them. 
gives them that buzz or feedback to know are they making something that's what the masses want. Um, but when it comes to release dates in general and missing release dates, out of all the video games that come out, I, I don't think it happens that often. In games, like because it happens in one game and in one series that everyone loves, versus how many games come out for everything else. Uh, um, but we live in a world of trolls and uh, disappointment, and uh, we just have to wait. I guess it depends on uh, how long the delay is, but I think it's 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 pressure from the ones controlling the release and publishers. I think most, in my opinion, but. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how these directors or how scheduling them, um, or are people doing? Uh, are people too ambitious in their game? Because uh, sometimes I think being too ambitious probably derails a game, and that almost feels like what that's what happened to me in my opinion of Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. Uh, the game was going this one way. And then they cut it up, and then they're like, "Okay, no, we're gonna bring it back together and do this." And when it came back together, it didn't mesh well, because it wasn't the same game when they were showing it off first. Um, and we see that with other games, uh, Division being one of them, where they show it at E3, and then uh, when it finally releases, it's not the same game. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's—I don't know. It's, in my opinion, it's not a huge deal. Thing. It's upsetting. Because you're just you're, but you're just hyped. You're hyped. That's all. Yeah, I just I feel like a lot of games have suffered from this. Like the last guard. I mean, I know a lot of these games. Like companies are starting to learn. Like I really feel like Final Fantasy 15 and No Man's Sky are kind of going to be like the last group of games to be like, oh well, we announced this game like ten years ago at this point. Like. It's come out already, but like I think a lot of people are taking a lot of cues from Fallout. You know, here's our game at E3. It's gonna be out in November. It's done. But it, for me, like I feel like, and a lot of channels are saying that, but No Man's Sky is the most overhyped game of 2016. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, but here's the thing. I feel like Hello Games, uh, did all they could to kind of like lower the hype of that game and kind of to like try to explain what the game was but Sony was the one that kind of is pushing this game as you know one of their big like one of their big exclusives because technically it is an exclusive and like there's been a lot of mixed signals about that game and it wasn't properly handled and like I feel bad for Hello Games in that respect I don't feel bad I mean as I was saying a few weeks ago sorry to interrupt that it's a game that didn't show off very well to build the hype. Like, it was only a few weeks ago where it was just like, I don't know if I'm on board yet or if I'm, I am on board, but those those last few videos they released and those last months where, you know, they did the part, parts of each part of the aspect of the game, that was when I fully understood what this game was. But yeah. the year or prior to what they showed off, to me it was just like, I get in a spaceship and I fly. Yeah. Yeah. Or pretty much just look at the beautiful colors, and right. that, that's pretty hope, much it. Hope uh, you, I think the hope thing you brought about some it, drugs for this game because this is what you're gonna be staring at. I, I think the thing about it is that you know, No Man's Sky is a learning lesson once again for some. That you know, because uh, if this was Shimu Three, folks would have way been pissed off. You know, if if Shimu Three Who, got who's, the same, who's mad about Shimu Three? The people who poured out millions of money into that game. Who wants Shenmue 3, though, know, for real? I guess the, all those yeah. folks who lost their mind with E3, they were showing that E3. The uh, but, but, you know, I, I think when it comes to delays, I think people got to watch how Nintendo hands, handles it and see how people respond back. Definitely with the Breath of the Wild, I know there was promises of it trying to be out for 2016. And I think Nintendo really was trying to get get it out, but, you know, Anuma came out, did a video, said that he was sorry that they needed more time, uh, and it had to get pushed. And look at look at the way that it paid off. I think when you put a certain date on it, uh, it gives it a problem because you know, 
even though even though Onuma said that he was really trying to get it at the out at the end of 2016, he really was. Um, there was just there were just things that happened in development that it can happen to any game. It can you know, it could be a change of the engine. Uh, for some reason, all these bugs and stuff coming out, which makes the game get delayed. I think when you start being fancy and flashy like Square Enix did with uh with the Final Fantasy thing, that's when it becomes a problem. It don't even even matter with the ten years thing because if we do the ten if we go by the ten year route, that Duke Nukem Forever should have been better than what it was when it got released. Yeah, and that's been a, and that's been delayed in the production. I think what past ten years, almost what fifteen years or whatever. Yeah. So I mean, so I mean, a delay is to get, is to try to get the game up to snuff. Sometimes there's there's just reasons as we, we are easy to, able to criticize it. Just like you said, Adam, we got trolls pretty much on the internet. So they're easy to criticize and say all the stuff. But hey, you haven't taken programming lessons to fix bugs and to test stuff and get artwork done. Like you don't know the video game industry when creating the game. Only thing that you know is you're easily you're easily typing your your emotions towards this company because you're upset that you're not getting what you feel like that's that's owed to you. And that's kind of the weird thing. It's like they don't owe you anything. Like. Right, <laughs> it's their product, right? Like, and uh, a lot of people have a hard time, uh, and that's, and that's the hard part. Like, death, death. Why do people get death threats over, uh, over stuff like that? Which I think is insane. I'm like, uh, because they're Jim, being, Jim they're Sterling, trying to intimidate. I think Jim Sterling, his channel got taken, uh, his website got taken down. Um, because of his review of No Man's Sky, um, yeah, the because he called, he called it average. I mean, and and I mean, his 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 review came up earlier, but the IGN one and the GameSpot one finally came on the Metacritic scores finally went up, and you're seeing sixes. That's that's what this game is. It's not eights. It's not nines. Uh, it's just above average. Is it terrible? And, no. And Jim Sterling has, and even Jim Sterling for his uh, Jim question for this week, he actually did uh, after he said uh, about his, the DDoS attack. He was just like, "Okay, the game is out. For all you people who are complaining about the game, go and buy it." Exactly. And it seems that these folks who are complaining about the game and the, the problems it had, they still haven't brought No Man's Sky. So it's just like. Why are you even mad at the reviews? Why are you mad at the, at the delays and stuff yeah. when you don't even own the game yourself at the moment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's that's the thing. It's just like I played the game. I'm reviewing the game. It's my opinion, and you don't own it. But you're giving your yeah. It's it's. Uh, right. We'll never. I don't think we're ever going away from that. I think it's just. Uh, it's like this is the way whole, whole thing. It's like <laughs> I always saw in the Destiny community. Uh, even on the uh, the uh, the website uh, forums, or whatever, like people that chime in and say, "Oh, this sucks," but they keep coming back to this forum to give their opinion on a game they don't play anymore. Why are they coming back? <laughs> because the, and, and I think some people just trying to prove a point and think that that point is going to get across for other people to stop playing it and thinking if that happens, then they win, then they won. No, Destiny has a million players um, across four platforms. Right. So, and then they're probably about to make more Buku bucks with uh, the price of iron. You know, so it doesn't even matter. That opinion doesn't even matter. If you do not like a game, move on. Have, <laughs> right. And you have, I mean, you have a right to voice your opinion. That's but like true. I always, but like I always said, if you're gonna voice it, at least rent the game, give it a try, and then voice your opinion. Don't go off no trailer or anything and just say, "Well, this is garbage. This is janky. This is the reviews I wrote uh, or I read," and then that's it. You know, those delays are to make the game better. Um, sometimes delays are needed because they're trying to avoid patching the game. If you throw a game out that's not ready and it needs to be patched, you're going to be highly upset. You don't want the Assassin's Creed Unity thing to happen, do you? 
Mm-hmm. If you don't want that kind of, if you don't want that kind of video game in your library, and you have to wait to everything always get patched almost every week, then welcome the delay. Let them fix it to it gets to a point that is better, and then let them release it. If it's the game that you're so hyped and psyched about, then make sure that on day one that you purchase. It. Don't wait for no used copies. Don't uh, if you want the digital code. Make sure that you pre-order the digital code and be and be done with it and enjoy the game if you feel like it's gonna bring you enjoyment. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I just feel like I wish I had this much time to go on message boards and just complain about every single game that's coming out. Man, if I had that much time, like. It's just wasted energy, right? Like, to me, I just yeah, like, like, wasted energy. like I have so much other stuff to do. I got, you know, four shows to do. I have game. I have games to play and review. I gotta go to work. I gotta spend time with my fiance. I gotta. I have all this stuff to do that it's just like, <laughs> like I I wish I had that much time. <laughs> well, the forums that for people are. I think some people just said it's make it easier for people to see that opinion. Like people probably feel like if I write it on this opinion, I can get a response quicker. But you see those same people who don't go on and make their own blocks and talk about stuff and be able to put it out. They don't do that. So it's just like if you're gonna be so concerned and be so angry about the delay, to me personally. Be professional and write a blog about it, and let me know why. Don't just be like, "Well, you guys suck. You, you, you are terrible programmers. I'm just, I'm not even going to buy the game no more." That's you're just reacting in a negative way or in a tantrum way. Because my thing is, if you're not going to buy the game, and then and then be on Twitter and be like, "Who? I'm so happy that I got this game that it finally came out." That yeah. don't even make no sense. I know. <laughs> People don't make sense, Ed. People, I'm concerned about about people. We all are. Yeah. But I'm just like with Final Fantasy 15. I can understand why people are upset because they had Greg Miller, Tim. Yeah, they threw a big is. event that said, "Hey, we're not we're not delaying this game. This is the day it's coming out." And guess what? They delayed it. <laughs> they got delayed. No, and I do respect the director coming out and do still doing the same thing. That Anuma did. That he came out, he gave his reasons. That to me personally, that's be- yeah, go ahead. Oh, to me, that's better when directors do that compared to back in the day when or or for some developers, they'll just give a news media uh, a sheet or something or some information that yeah, it's been delayed. That's it. No yeah. purpose. And they still like, brought, they showed off some new gameplay and stuff at Gamescom, which I thought was good. Mm-hmm. Um, so they didn't just come and put a press conference, uh, press release online saying, "Delay, see ya, sorry." And so you know, they're not hiding from he, it. So. And he actually talked about that. He was just like, "We're trying to capture some new gameplay to guys to give to you guys in the coming weeks." So I, I, to me, personally, that's cool that he said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's there's certain guess, ways to do it and there's certain ways not to do it. So. Well, I just I just think it, it also it depends on the delay. Like if a couple months, I'm, uh, I like it's happened to a few games over the last couple of years where they're going for a November release or an October release, and it gets pushed to February, um, and it's like it sucks because like that's probably the game you wanted for Christmas, but. Uh, I'd rather have a polished game than a than a broken game. Yeah. Um, and especially like yeah, like if it's gonna, I can gonna pop this disc in and just go, and it's gonna save me a, a patch. Why not? I mean, uh, there's definitely a reasoning, but there isn't too many companies that come out and acknowledge yes, this is the way, this is why. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think. I think, and I, feel like, I think we're used to it. We're used, we should be used to the delays now. It's, it's not uncommon. And I feel like Square is like really trying to get in good with their fans because they've had such a bad rap. Like Since Final Fantasy XIII, they've had such a bad rap. And the release of Final Fantasy XIV Online 
and then they went and remade that whole game to gain good graces, and they they bought IDOS, and they are putting out all these good games, and they're trying to do right by their fans because right. I feel like they knew they know they've screwed up a few times, and like. And, you know, yeah, it sucks that this game got delayed, and yeah, people are going to complain about it, but I still feel like this was a good move that they, like, came out and explained why, at least. You know, at least they explained why. At least they are like, look, this is a single-player game. This game's going to have a huge day one patch, but what about the thousands of players that live in the middle of the United States that don't have good, great internet connection? Or what about, you know, right. people that don't have the internet that are playing on these consoles, like, this patch needs to be on the disc because this is a single-player game. And people need to recognize this. Guess what? Just because Final Fantasy XV got delayed doesn't mean that you can play other terrific games that came out this year. Heck, go play Bravely Second. Go find Final Fantasy There's a Winner for the 3DS. Go find other games that Square Enix has already out on the floor. Yeah, and even like that. if you if you're looking for a JRPG, play like if you want to play I something by Sutsuna Square. Just I am Setsuna just, just came out. Yeah, like so. I mean, you have stuff to carry you over until November 29th. Like being pissed off because the company delayed something. Guess what? The company has other titles that you could go out and play. Catch up on your backlog. Hey, play some mobile games for goodness sakes. Final, sure, but the whole party Final Fantasy catalog is probably on iOS right about now. Yeah, it's, the, it's, oh, it's, it's cool. such a great, it's, it's such a great yeah. version of Final Fantasy Tactics too. That's like, that's like one of the best ways to play Final Fantasy Tactics <laughs> is on iOS. Oh. I mean. I mean, so if, if a company has a delay in games, it doesn't mean that it's stopping you from playing other stuff. Catch up, like I said, catch up on your backlog and stuff. We got great games coming out this whole holiday season before even Final Fantasy touched down uh, for us. Heck, Nintendo Selects will be out by then. Go get some of those games. You know, great sales are going on. There's the PSN Flash sale. Heck, don't forget, we still got Black Friday coming up before the Final Fantasy 15 come out. And if you don't think tons of games are not going to go on sale, yeah, then, then shoots. Don't save up your money for Final Fantasy 15. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can play and have that take your mind off. Heck, people are still playing Monster Hunter 4 for 3DS. You know, and playing generations and stuff like, so like the last Guardian's gonna be out. Heck, try, uh, platinum that game. Like mm. that's so much great games. Uh, Saga the Deep. Uh, like like you're playing Adam. That's right. A lot of people haven't even played that yet. Pick and that like, up and go play. So many good games have come out now. Like I heard Brutal's really good. Hyperlight Drifter is amazing. If you haven't played Axiom Verge, play Axiom Verge. Axiom and like Verge. you said, Song of the Deep. I'm probably going to get that on tomorrow when I get paid. It's such like, a problem when we have so many games to play. I know. <laughs> Too many games to play. I don't have time to worry about game delays. I like it when games are delayed. It gives me more time to play the ones that are out. <laughs> and then to add on the fact to go on the forum to complain about a delay? Like, really? Yeah, I know. Ah, people. Well, delays aren't I a mean, bad thing for, uh, for me. Personally. I mean, right. what was that quote that Miyamoto said that ga- bad games are bad forever, but delayed game will like a game that's delayed will always be better than a game that's bad forever or something. So yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all can say whatever y'all want about Star Fox Adventure, but it's a good game to me. I'm enjoying it. <sighs> well, that ends our topic of the week. PlayStation Essential Time. Are you ready for this? One of my favorite games of all time. I didn't play it on PS2. I played it on GameCube. But still. X-Men Legends. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes, I'm a huge X-Men fan, and I love the Diablo-esque Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, and that game is just... Oh, I wish I wish Activision would re-release that game in HD. Holy crap! I want that game so bad. Uh, it's oh, well. it's basically you take uh, four character four X Men and you go and do dungeon crawling and uh, this, there's two of them. X Men Legends Two is all about apocalypse, so uh, it's really good. I highly highly recommend X Men Legends for PS2. 
Good choice, good choice. Nice. So. Oh, man. What a show. Good show. Good show. Number eight in the books. In Yay. the books. You can, you can write it down. You can close it. It's in the books. It's in the books. Ah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on DNA DualShock this week. Remember, you can find the show every Saturday on YouTube.com slash Digital Nerd Advocates Network, DigitalNerdAdvocates.com, and on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. Adam, where can we find you? Hey, follow the link. Check out my YouTube channel, Twitch, and Facebook group, Let's Plays and Commentary, and uh, come check out me on Twitch. We usually on three or four nights a week, and PlayStation handled a little underscore angel. Ed? <laughs> I'm going to go take another nap while Ed... Re- <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at go T-H-A-T-R-E-T-R-O-C-O-D-E. Um, you can check out my uh, podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other, other podcast apps, and on the anonymous radio network, You also can check out my other podcast, World 101. Uh, we have done the commentary, or we're getting ready to do the commentary, depending on when you listen to this episode of The Wizard. So do check that out. Um, then you can find that out on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, other podcast apps, and uh, archive.org. You can find me on um, Twitter, the lyrical one. Uh, my PSN code is Okamico, O-K-A-M-I-C-A-L. And check out my new blog for the Digital Nurse Advocate Network dot com. Have to make sure I correct myself. Um, uh, check out my new blog up there. Uh, that things might look beautiful, but sometimes it has no substance. And then look out for my new blog coming out real soon, uh, which is talking about is. Uh, the Legend of Zelda, the original one, is it an RPG or not? And I will talk to you guys about that one. So uh, check that out. Right, and I think that's about it for me. Um, hopefully you. You forgot your block- Twitch channel. Um, I said the lyrical one. I said that for Twitch. Did you? Yeah, I said. It. Um, do check out uh, NGR. Uh, hopefully we'll be coming soon with a power block episode. <laughs> Uh, what are you doing tomorrow night, Ed? Uh, I'm closing, but I'll be home about 10, hopefully about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. All right, cool. We can do it tomorrow night. We can do it tomorrow, okay. So, yeah. Uh, even though people are watching this on Saturday, uh, check that episode of Power Block coming soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you can find me at Rogue Spartan 4 on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. And on PlayStation, Xbox Live, Wii U, uh, you can find all my content on DigitalNerdAdvocates.com and on YouTube.com slash Network. Let's Plays, Destiny stuff, streams, all kinds of stuff. Uh, which reminds me, I have to talk to you guys about something after the show because Google Hangouts is going away. So I got to learn how to use YouTube Live. So. Yeah, that's, that's, gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trust me, Corey, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got a, I got one thing that I'm working on writing wise that's gonna be done early next week. So make sure you check that out. Don't want to spoil anything, but uh, it's about Nintendo. So uh, make sure you check that out next week. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me this week. Thanks for so much for watching. And until next week. Thank you all. Ciao. Peace out.